Hello and welcome to Cinema Subculture, the podcast where we discuss everything strange, obscure and downright messed up in the world of movies. My name's Gary. And I'm Simon. So Gary, what film are we here to discuss this evening? August Underground's Penance is a 2007 found footage horror film directed by Fred Vogel. It's the final film in the August Underground trilogy and it follows serial killers Peter Mountain and Krusty as they continue their murderous acts of violence, torture and home invasion. The film maintains an anti-filmmaking aesthetic combining an absence of plot with amateur cinematography but is it disturbing or just plain dull? Okay Gary, um, so I'm quite keen to get your thoughts on this one since it was another one that you had suggested. Um... As you say, it's the third film in the, the August Underground trilogy, and we've, this is the, we've done them all now. So, take it away. Yeah, so, comparing it to others in the series, there's things about this one that I like a bit more. I quite enjoy the start of the film. Um, so, at the start, you just kind of see the, the characters kind of, you follow them about doing nothing, which you also get in the other movies, but I think this had felt a bit more kind of like minimalist, filmmaking it felt very sparse that that I found relatively a bit more captivating. I think this one maybe has a wee bit more variation comparing it with Mordom which I think maybe felt like it was a bit one riff repetitive. It was just the gore put up front uh, quite brutally uh, whereas this one has a bit more variation. Formally, I thought the use of long takes, single shots, was quite well done, especially when you had quite technical setups in terms of the effects, which must have taken a lot of planning, you know, to to get them uh, perfected. But now that I've revisited these films, I kind of know that I don't really like them, but I think that raises quite a few interesting questions in itself because Fred Vogel as a director intends you not to like them but I'll throw Mm. back to you for now what did you make of this one? Yeah, I I kind of agree with a lot of what you're saying there I think the the first thing that came to mind for me was uh, it feels like to me that Vogel is perhaps losing his own interest in in the subject matter here a little bit. Um, because, and I say that because uh, the the kind of torture, murder scenes for me in this were pretty forgettable for the most part and uh, like, like kind of um, boring is the wrong word, not boring, but like they felt almost like secondary to what he would seem to be doing, which I found more interesting, which was different than the other films, in that we seem to get more characterization for the, the, the two leads. Um, even if it just a little, um, I, I felt like I was actually in, like in somewhat getting getting invested in them a little bit, you know, to the, to the begin, near the beginning of the film. And um, there's certain parts where uh, Krusty's like, visibly becoming like deteriorating like you know like aesthetically if that makes sense um and you know it it did i did feel that it was it gave me a bit more of an attachment to what was was happening but i guess i i I just felt like it's like the, the the murder and torture scenes are still well done but i just don't know if if he was maybe just not as interested in it at this point you know what i mean um and it was like he almost wanted to explore more about the actual inter personal um relationships between these two characters uh but maybe either he didn't maybe realize that till he was making it already or or or, you know it was almost like he he didn't might not have had the skill at that time to to, to actually you know pull that off um as i'd say i was def i definitely had more as i say interest in this one I think it was just due to the slight bit more characterization of the, you know, getting getting deeper with the characters. So, yeah, it's a tough one. I feel like I feel like between this and Mordom, there's probably a really good version of this film there. You know, that this is a supposedly a, a direct more of a direct sequel to Mordom than than Mordom was to August Underground. You know, the the characters carry over 
even though you could say it's the same character in the first one, right? Um, but yeah, I think I think the stuff with the the, the murder and torture in, in the, the second one was a little bit more interesting. You could say, you know, he felt like he was that that's what he was making, and that felt like quite a straight straight deal of that film. Um, but yeah, I think a middle ground between the two would have been could have been really interesting and maybe a bit closer to what um, like you know Lucifer Valentine does with, with the, you know the Vomit Gore trilogy, not the fourth one. But yeah, it's a shame. It's a shame, but because I, 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 I did you get that impression at all that like maybe you were just losing a little bit of interest in it? I don't know. Mm, not especially no, but I think you're right to pick up the characterization because they do say in the audio commentary that it was intentional this time right. to try and give the characters a bit more backstory and spend a bit more time on that. But I don't know if we get enough of that, though. Mm. And also, I, I, I think the film deserves criticism because where's the penance? Mm. You know, if this is going to be the conclusion, the end, uh, there's not a lot of penance in it. <laughs> Very little penance. The whole plot arc about Krusty suddenly having a bout of regret and guilt Mm, doesn't really play that well. It's not that convincing. I think if they were wanting to take it somewhere new, they would have to drop some of their realist credentials, the realist methods to make it more dramatic and act a bit more. But that's one of the paradoxes about it, isn't it? If they did try and um, make it a bit more dramatic, then you're losing that kind of core philosophy that the films have. Because I was reading a lot of reviews... Yeah which was criticising the film, saying that acting is terrible. But is that really a fair criticism? Because, I mean, straight up speaking, it is acting, but they're trying to play real people on camera. They're not specifically trying to avoid trying to act. The, mm -hmm. the, the intention is it's a portrayal of people who can't act because they're not actors. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's interesting because I, I would say um, the actress who plays Krusty, I don't think she's bad. I think I think I think I, 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 I thought she was quite believable, in as you see in, in the kind of perspective of what the film is, uh, and I thought Vogel was better in this and in Mordom than he was in the first one. Right, he's, I think he's he's got better in what he was doing, but you're right about the penance. It's it is interesting that like. They've tried to play the penance off it as being Krusty's like um, kind of breakdown or, but as you say, a bit of, of guilt. Um, and the more dramatic route would be probably for you know to her maybe start working against them in some fashion or reporting them to the police. I, you know, but I don't know how believable that would be. As you say, if, in this kind of realistic take of this story. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't know, I don't really know where the penance name comes from you know what that is it just the fact that yeah of, of the kind of the psychological like turmoil that or you know the, the depression the kind of like, her trying to kill herself at the end i mean is that yeah is that what... i mean it suggests that the characters are sort of coming full circle doesn't it mm. where they actually start to regret their actions but i don't think there's actually enough of that in there in terms of the plot to make it dramatically uh, interesting. This is what I'm talking about there. The, the two couple of things occurred to me, right? Um, I read a synopsis of this film after I watched it, just to kind of, you know, clear up a few things in my head, right? Um, and one of them was, it mentioned the escalating um, bouts of arguments that the two characters have, you know, they, they've, they're, they're falling out more and stuff like that. Um, so one thing about that is that, like, well, I mean, that happened all the time during Mordom. Though this doesn't seem like a new thing. So you know, that didn't really stand out to me as a kind of plot point. It just felt like a continuation of that relationship. And and second is, I know. Do you think that, that there's a few times where Peter, um, specifically, kind of, um, you know, chants, "Why did you make me do that?" You know, these kinds of things and. Um, that after he's killed people, in, in, which I don't think that was there in Mordor or August Underground, so is that like? Do you think that's them trying to, him trying to push that kind of? He's also having a bout of of kind of conscience, or do you think it? It didn't come across that to me. If that was the case, if that's what he was trying to do, I didn't get that. It was more a case of 
just this character is another another thing that he was adding into that characterization. But I didn't feel he was any you know repentance or yeah. Over what I mean, done. I think it hints that he's also having some kind of breakdown, but not to the same degree as Krusty. Yeah, I mean, I feel I also felt that there wasn't there wasn't the same level of I don't know. I think it comes down to again the, the actual torture and murder, and so the 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 side characters, the extra people in the film, didn't feel very memorable either in this one. It felt like I, I was, you know, there was more stuff with with the and with the, the victims. Like the victims were very, and in some instances, literally faceless in this, um, which. Again, it, it kind of this. It's similar to what we said about the the first one, if I remember, like the fact that it's almost the way that it's filmed and shot. It, 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 because it's so anti-filmic, it it kind of you kind of lose interest in almost not interest, but like you lose focus on what's happening. Um, and I think similar to this one, the 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 victims were like kind of faceless, and you know you didn't really. Feel I didn't really. I mean, I don't know. Maybe I'm, <laughs> maybe I'm losing my mind. But I didn't really feel anything for them particularly because I was like, you know what I mean? Like you just didn't feel any. It felt like you were, for you know, you know, you didn't necessarily get a lot of attachment in other films. But I definitely had a you know empathy for those the the the, the victims in another film. But in this one, it felt very detached from them, almost. And in fact, I think the first one of the first shots of, of the torture or murder is almost like it's in the aftermath of the killing. Because um, I think Peter says to Krusty, did you get that? And she's like, well, there's a lot of moving around and stuff. Like, yeah, we miss a bit in the yeah. middle there. And, and, and that, I quite liked that when it first happened. I was like, oh, that's actually, you know, that could have been quite interesting if we then went deeper with the, with, with them as characters. But um, but yeah, I mean, what do you think about that? It, you know that we don't really get anything with them well that's one of the questions we came to with other films wasn't it you know as one of the f- sort of totems of the disturbing canon you know how disturbing actually is it mm-hmm. because we tend to see the more realistically you depict it that the more you move away from narrative and filmmaking technique like the less impact it actually has on the viewer mm-hmm even though I've been mulling over the home invasion scene. And I think it's true to say that it is quite disturbing, but at the same time, it's also quite dull and boring. So it raises a an interesting paradox because I don't really like these films, but I do think that they raise interesting questions about filmmaking and about film criticism. So I think that's why they kind of intrigue me a wee bit. So I think that the conclusion is that a film which knows how to manipulate its audience will ultimately feel more disturbing, feel more depraved, have more of an impact. Even though superficially these films have more depraved content, more graphic content, more dis- more violent content, I think one of the problems is like they're immediately forgettable. Mm-hmm. Like I can hardly remember what happens in the previous yeah. films like and I'm like does this bit come from that film or what happens at the end of that one uh, I can remember individual sections but they do kind of blur together quite easily but I think you're right because we don't have any emotional connection mm-hmm. with the characters and I think the, the film's also problematic because we're constantly in the POV of the killers yeah who are such vile characters and we're never in the POV of the victims and I, yeah, I totally agree with again with everything you said there. Um, I, I guess it's like when I, I think back on Mordom and um, and August Underground, there are victims I can't even remember. Uh, like like so, the scene in the in the when they go into the the store like, in, is that in Mordom I think, uh, or is that in the first one? I can't remember. Um, but but right, and it's like. There, there are things there that the I you know, remember about that, and I, I kind of, I definitely remember feeling empathy for the victims. Um, and then in in Mordom, that was the the but the, the part with the, was it the two girls that they had they had they had kind of tortured. You know, um, I don't know. I just feel that maybe it's just the diminishing returns, but I, I think that's what led me to feel like he didn't necessarily have any creative ideas for what he was trying to do in those scenes, and it felt kind of derivative of what he'd done before and, and it, it didn't even feel like he was doing a, a bad version of what he'd done before it just felt like we, we'd we kind of seen everything he had 
and he's you know what I mean um, and it's like oh he, the guy jerked off and wiped his semen on her it's like, it's like ah, okay right I mean uh, okay I mean it, it just it just was like it didn't really um, feel like he was he was that into those scenes which again is fine if we had enough elsewhere um, but I feel that's where you could say like um, you could say let's say his intention wasn't to move some focus on from the, the 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 you know the murder scenes to the 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 killers. Let's say that this is this is all accidental. So I would say that then in like in August Underground even and in Mordom, he he more successfully manages to portray those murder and torture scenes in a more kind of even though we we did say at the time we weren't that disturbed by them, but I'd, I'd still say they moved the needle more than this. Mm, yeah, if you know what I mean. I just I felt these were. You know, I think there's two or three bits where they're cutting intestines out of someone, and I'm like, I don't know. Just eventually, you know, you're just like, okay, but I don't know. It's hard to say if that's what he's going for or not. As you say about, you know, how do you criticize this? But I think, given the three films, it kind of can give. Like, I think I can. You know, you can you can at least hold them up at one against each other. Um. And you know, coming from the point that the, the, he's he's having the same aim, uh, you know, with the trilogy, you know, he's he's trying to do the same thing over and over again, um, and maybe that's the maybe that's the problem, you know, he's he's he's, he's trying to do the same thing, but I, I feel like there are there are stronger, the stronger parts of this film definitely are the stuff with him and her, and and even like the like you know the part that what sticks out to me, I definitely was like, oh god, you know, like. I don't know how I feel about this. Was the was the deer scene when they're cutting up the deer? Now it's like it goes on, and you're like, okay, wait. Well, there's the lion, and it's a guy that owns the lion, and it's like this appears to be. You know, they didn't just do it for the film. It's kind of what I'm getting at, right? Which you, I'm like, initially I was like, whoa, like what, what, what? This is a good special effect if it's if it's just a special effect, right? Um, but yeah, I don't know. I think I think I think it is. They are really hard to criticise, but I think you can at least hold them up against each other if they're all trying to get if they're all coming from the same aim. Yeah. Um. So it is handy we have a trilogy <laughs> of these films to be able to at least compare them to each other. Yeah, because this is what's been going through my mind about these films because I know that this horror fans absolutely hate these films, mm. and in the commentary, Vogel says that his intention is to make you leave the film feeling sad and fucked up is his words but when it's a found footage aesthetic how can we interrogate the ethics of the filmmaker when the filmmakers are essentially the characters themselves and within the diegesis of the film it basically champions every horrible vile thing you can imagine rape, murder, torture homophobia, misogyny and there it is no moral voice that critiques that. So I can understand why someone might watch these films and think this is horrendous because you hate what's on screen plus there's no moral voice of the director that contextualises it on screen. Because normally we could interrogate the ethics of a filmmaker by saying right what is on the screen and then saying like oh how is it presented because when Vogel says that he wants you to hate it mm. there's nothing in the text itself to tell you that so you know how do we deal with that because I think even in other found footage movies for instance Blair Witch Project I feel like you can get a sense of the direction because one it's got a, a kind of fairly traditional narrative of start middle and end You've got a sense of the action and the horror uh, peak. It'll, the action and the horror builds and then peaks. Mm -hmm. And even though all, everything you're seeing is shot by the characters, I feel like you can get a sense of the director's presence. Whereas in this, I don't think you can. Yeah, I was, I was going to say there, like, you know, you're saying about that. I, do, you, is it, do you think the Blair Witch, another reason the Blair Witch works is because that we find it easier to put ourselves in the like you know the quote unquote good person's shoes um and 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 having yeah and having stuff happen to us right um yeah i mean i don't know i don't know 
I mean, we've, we've said it a few times over this, and I, I, um, I'd, I'd still agree with the things that are happening in the film, as you say, are horrendous and vile, but I don't feel the necessarily impact. But again, I don't know if that's just uh, a numbness to the, this type of content or, or, or coming at it from the point of view that we are looking at it to criticise it or comment on it. Um, I don't think, yeah, I don't feel the people that this would um, horrify and disgust enough to turn it off are people that wouldn't watch it. And then it's like, well, what's the what is the aim? If your your aim is to get your audience that you want to be disgusted and put off by it to turn it off, like what's what? I don't know. That's like a you know <laughs> the the snake eating its own tail there, isn't it? I mean, it's... yeah, I could think of the reasons why I wouldn't want to watch them again. Like they're dull, they're boring, they're amateurish, they have horrible yeah. characters, <laughs> they're bad actors. Yeah. And that's often mm-hmm. what comes up in reviews of the films. But mm. it's like, how yeah. can that be a criticism when all that was intentional in the first place? Yeah. It's not like that's a failing of the filmmaking. Uh, They're meant to be a random bunch of footage that makes no sense with no plot, with horrible characters doing horrible things shot by a drunk guy at a party. So they're basically invincible to criticism. Yeah. Although saying that, it did occur to me that there was a potential way that they could have built in mm-hmm. um, a criticism of the content of the film while still maintaining the the realist design that we're still maintaining the found footage design, which mm-hmm. was well, one of the problems is like all the the victims are extremely passive. None of them resist none of fight back so mm-hmm. I think if you had had a, a victim saying something like don't do this this is wrong you could have built into the film a moral wider moral framework uh, about the actions mm-hmm. the wider moral framework while still it wouldn't have contradicted the, the point of view of the killers or the found footage or the overall structure and design that would have been a moral voice within the film and a way a mode of internal criticism about the film itself so a few steps back to something you said so um you're saying that it's it's it's, it's difficult or impossible to criticize these films because the intention every criticism that's levied at it is is the apparently the apparent yeah. intention <laughs> Right. So, but I mean, what what is his exact ex- statement on his intention with the film? Is it is it to make people feel sad, fucked up, and disgusted, or is it to make people feel bored and disinterested and kind of whatever about the film? I mean, is that is that the part? Is that his purpose? Yeah. Well, because because yeah, the philosophy is that. Mm-hmm. All existing horror movies glamorise violence, so they wanted to make a movie that was so real that it actually showed violence as it really exists in real life, mm-hmm. and to turn the audience off rather than the making them, you know, excited about serial murder and death, you know. And I guess that brings me back to, to something we mentioned in the first one again. Um, when we spoke about August Underground. It's like. <sighs> So my, my knee-jerk reaction to what you just said was that, well, I don't think that works because I've, not lots, but I've seen little bits of actual real-life violence, you know, like, you know, back in the, what, mid noughties and, you know, early teens um, of, of uh, this millennium, uh, the, that kind of stuff went around a little bit, you know, whether it was like snipers taking headshots and, and things like that, you know, really messed up stuff that I really wish I'd never seen. Um, so that stuff did disturb me. Um, it didn't, uh, you know, it didn't glamorise it, it didn't, you know, right? So, so I'm trying to figure out, I guess, and as I say, we said it in the first one, is it because we know this isn't real that this one 
that these films don't really have an effect on. I'm just talking from my personal point of view. Um, I would say still, even within that bubble, that this fil- this third film falls down on on that, like because I, I, there were parts of the first two that at least, as I say, moved the needle a little bit, and I could I had that thought of if this was real, whereas here I didn't have that feeling in this one at all, um, which again leads into my thing about I think he was I think he was done with this concept really by the time he got here maybe I'm wrong but um so so you know what I mean like so I don't know does it does it just feed back into that is it again another look back into well if we if we thought for a second that this was actually real would it then disturb us or disturb me like again I'm only speaking from my point of view I don't know how you feel about it yeah I mean probably but I think these films are pretty much as real as it gets without actually depicting the actual real thing. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, the, 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 you're right. They, they are, like, the, you know, the, the effects are really well done and it, there's no criticism there. Yeah, I mean, we've, we've said that again, but I don't know. I, I don't know if, if, if I was just to come across this and, and someone was to try and show me if I would feel different. Um, or, or if I would be able to just say I don't think this is real, you know what I mean? Like that's that's kind of that's what, and maybe that's where the criticism comes at. That you can maybe levy at it is that it's, it's it's difficult because we know it's not real, but I feel like there's parts in the, this one specifically that I would be able to say that I don't think this is a real. Hmm, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong, but it's it's really hard to be kind of uh, objective that way with it. Yeah, I mean, I suspect that the usual reaction of people when they see this, a film like this, is that they assume that the views of the characters are the views of the filmmakers. And I think with a Mm -hmm. film of this specific style, that's not a crazy thing to think. And I'm wondering if I just saw the movie without seeing any of Vogel's interviews or knowing the filmmaking intention, would I think the same thing? It's hard to know because there's nothing in the film to direct you to uh, the message of the film. And maybe I would also say that this film is disgusting because it does feel like a celebration Mm. of the views of the characters, of the acts of the characters, of the deeds of the characters. Feels like a celebration of mm-hmm. all the terrible things that are in the movie. I think you could watch the film and think, "All right, this director's a total piece of shit." Mm-hmm. I think that's one of the reasons why people would be turned off by it. Yeah, I would agree with that. I just, I just don't know if they do enough to. I, I think. I don't know. It's hard. It's hard to say. I. I feel like the maybe it's maybe it is down to the acting, but. I don't know you've said that's like how do you criticize that? But I think if you're going for realism, I think there's there I think I noticed it especially in this one. I can't quite, you know, I can say that I did in the other ones necessarily, except for the first one with that fucking guy laughing the whole way through. Um but there was definitely a a, a, a kind of smear of artifice to the performances that I didn't necessarily feel. Um, and a little bit more stagedness, but but that was a little bit more to do with the the stuff that wasn't the torture stuff necessarily. You know, like the homeless guy and stuff like that. That felt staged a little, you know. Whereas the like like in the first uh, August Underground, and then even when they go to the line in this one, it feels like you're just kind of picking up. As you say, it's just stuff, other stuff that happens to be on the camera. You said that in the, in the first film, um, so I don't know. I, I, as I say, I, I feel like is I like between the three films, there's, there's definitely something there that would that gets across what he is trying to get across. I, I think the first one maybe does it, like a little bit more. It's, it's hard to say. Like, it depends what one you see first, right? Because you get used to the the, act, the, the characters, the actors. So by the time you get to the third one, you're like, yeah. There's that guy from the other two films, right? So, um, 
if I, I guess anyone I'd seen, I would maybe say this about, but I suppose after the first one, you kind of maybe got more of that found footage feel to it. Um, whereas this just felt like a part two or three, right? Like, you know, you're just kind of getting more and you're like, you're like how, where, have they, where have these people found another tape from this guy? You think he'd hide his tapes? <laughs> yeah, but it's funny because there's people that absolutely love these films. Um, one of the, the first victim in the film that came about because he was a super fan who wanted to be part of the project and people get tattoos of the movies. Yeah, well, I mean, and and as we always say, like, I mean, if you like it, you like it. I mean, it's there's plenty of stuff that we enjoy that people would would judge us unfairly probably for enjoying. Um, so I'm not about to sit and, and, and judge on, on, on anyone else that, that really loves these films unless they hold them up as personal mantras for stuff that they would like to do, in which case, no, please don't do that. But um, but yeah, for me, I just I, I, I guess I just don't think they're that successful in, in what they're trying to do because it didn't disgust me or make me feel sad. It was just like, okay, you know. But is that because they're too successful? You know, because they're too real? But, but no. No, because no. If it was, I, I don't think so. I really don't think so. I know, I know. You, I, I get where you're going, right? And I think it's a, it's a really interesting conversation, right? Because it's like, you just see how do you criticize that? But um, I don't think that's what it is. Mm. I don't. I don't. Um, I maybe felt that in the first film. No, I didn't feel that in the first one because I felt like there was too much. There was too much um, bullshittery. That um, that felt injected. Sure. It's it's really difficult to say. As, as you say, it could be it could be any of these things. It just depends, like when how you watch them. And I I, I just feel if I actually thought I was watching a film about, or sorry, if I was actually watching a real snuff film, that I don't think I would have no emotional reaction to it. Maybe mold myself to too high a level, but but you know what I mean. I just feel like I I don't know if I could. I don't know. Um, it's not something I've ever seen, so I can't really say. But there's death, and and I'm thinking about now examples of stuff I've seen, like type of things in films that. But it all kind of feeds back into your argument. Well, there was probably music happening. There was probably a perspective being taken by the filmmakers that kind of not manipulate you but like certainly lead you to a kind of emotional conclusion but uh, I don't know it's a tough one it is, it is I, 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 yeah but holding them together the, the three films against themselves I still think this one was less successful than the other two on the whole yeah I don't know I think if I was going to watch one again it would probably be this one but uh, we're talking very by a very thin margin these man, that's like but an hour and a half. Just watch something else. Yeah, I don't like this film, but I do find the films interesting because of the questions they raise, and I quite like talking about them. And people coming up with uh, aims and uh, purposes for their film that seem indefeatable in criticism. Because that's a clever thing as well. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Yeah. Fair play, Fred Vogel. Fair play. As I said a couple of times, I think that between this and Mordom, I think there was, he had something really that could have done what he was or could have got closer to what he was aiming to do um with to me a little bit more interesting character interaction um but yeah it's not i don't think anyone needs to be watching these unless they have a real interest uh to, to see what's going on here so that'll do it for august underground's penance you've been listening to cinema subculture If you'd like more of this content, please make sure you're subscribed on YouTube, like the video and hit the notification bell. Thanks for listening. I've been Simon. I've been Gary. Keep it extreme.
Mayor.